This is the new 3D earring free project I've made for you. I'm using the silhouette to cut and etch it, and then I'm going to show you the construction. Here's the silhouette file. Um, it's color-coded, and if you're not familiar with how the silhouette works, um, watch through the video, and maybe you'll be interested in taking my class on CraftCast. Here's a link to where you can find it, and it's a very easy one, two, three method of using the silhouette with metal clay, and it yields beautiful, beautiful results. Okay, now I'm going to show you the etching being done on the silhouette. I've sped it up a little bit. I have a slab of two card, one fire flex, brilliant bronze. And it's etching really, really nicely. What I'm doing is I'm etching at a depth or a thickness of 10, which is um, pretty similar to how I talk about etching it with PMC. Because this um, clay cuts so nicely, it's a little softer on the surface. Um, so it's going to give us a lot of different etching options. And the reason I'm using um, a depth of 10 is you want to be a little careful not to go too deep with two card clay. Um, I'm putting two two card parts together and I don't want the earrings to be too heavy. Um, but you don't want to etch all the way through the clay. And if you set the um, thickness or the depth really, really deep, um, you might etch through it and just kind of maybe, you know, not the, have the clay be quite as strong because you've over etched. So I'm going to show you the cutting. I'm going to remove the Amy Chomas etching pen. And now I'm putting in a blade. It's a clean and sharpened blade. And I'm using a blade of six. Normally I was having to use a seven, but because this clay cuts so nice, I'm able to go down to a six. And I'm using the pre programmed um, cutting protocols from my class. There's a whole bonus video on it. And it cuts just, just beautifully. Um, I'm going to send it to the silhouette a second time. Um, I usually do cut twice, except for with PMC paper, but um, it just gives you an extra level of, in case there's any place where it didn't get cut all the way through. And I'm going to dust off again. Again, we don't want any residue dust in that um, texture because uh, we want it to show up as beautifully as we etched it. So I'm going to eject the mat. And this is a fairly new mat, and new mats are really, really sticky. They're a little difficult to get um, off, but um, you, what you do is you take a tissue blade and tilt it slightly towards the mat and away from the clay, and just push it through until you've got the clay off. And what we do is we put our mat aside at that point because we don't want it to get any dust or anything on it. And I flip it over, and normally I use a tissue blade to remove the protective film. But with this clay, I'm just able to pull it right off, which is really, really nice. Much easier. And then I just pop out the pieces. And it cut beautifully. It's um, If it doesn't cut well, you can see ragged edges, and these are nice, smooth edges, um, which is important to me because it's a lot less finishing that needs to be done later on. And then what I'm going to do, if the centers don't fall right out, I'm just poking them out with a tissue blade and just pulling it. And normally I take these little um, extra pieces and I can use them as embellishments. Um, those of you that took my class know we talk about designing um, for our cutouts, so we would design another piece around those little ones. I didn't do that th this time, but I have some ideas on putting them on open circles and things. So we're going to take these two parts and put them together, and now I'm going to show you the construction portion of the video. Okay, I'm going to show you a little bit about the construction of this piece. I've already made one of the earrings, and I'm, I'm going to show it to you right here. And you know, um, the reason I like dry construction and flexible dry construction is you really couldn't do this with wet clay unless you built a whole armature to put it on. And you also, even with that, as you move the clay when it's wet, you're ending up with some um, distortion. You could also do this same project using stencils and creating your own. But with dry construction, you know, we can get that beautiful slope without any distortion. And I think pretty in a pretty easy way. And I can envision this earring with all different kinds of shapes. So I'm going to, I like to clean up the edges a little bit with sandpaper. 
Um, I like to do that before I construct. And it's pretty smooth because it cuts so nicely, so it doesn't need a whole lot of work. And I'm keeping the tube in the original until I'm ready to fire, just to hold the shape. I'm using little tiny clothespins that I got at the craft store. Um, they're going to clamp together um, the flex clay um, with the curve while we put it on the heating surface. Um, you don't want to use binder clips because they're a little too strong. You want something that's going to hold them together, but you don't want it to be like, you want to hold it together only you don't want to um, dent the clay so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw um, put a little hole in both of them um, the way I do this with earrings is I put one on top of the other I don't have a real good eye to get it in exactly the right place so I put them on top of each other so I know the hole is going to be in exactly the same place and I will drill down until I get a starter hole in the second piece and then I remove the first one and complete it and this is also helping to line up um, the project. And I prefer putting the hole in before you curve it also. I think you're less lo likely to distort um, the clay. And once we've got that done, we're going to join the two pieces together. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to join the bottom. And I have a little clay shaper. I have a tiny brush. And two little circles also, which um, I'm not going to show you how to add those, but... Um, those are two little embellishments I put on the project. And you could put any embellishment on you want. That's the wonderful thing about metal clay projects. It's, it's so easy to make them your own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make um, the clay ready to receive um, a little bit of slip. And I don't always use slip, those of you that take my class. Um, but when, you've got, when you're adding two curved pieces together, the physics of it is going to make them want to pull apart. And I'm just, um, I'm loosening up that clay a little bit. So we want to, um, I add a little slip to give it an extra, some extra hold. So I'm wiggling it up to make sure it curves nicely. I, I don't think I would have a problem with two card clay, but Hadar says this really kind of helps it curve better. Then I add a little water on the bottom. And I, what I like to do is I like to take um, this is a little lip brush, disposable, and I like to bring up a little slip before I add slip. I think um, it joins a lot better when you do that. Then I'm just adding a bit of slip on the bottom of each clay, each uh, of the pieces. And when you've got texture on the other side, you want to always be careful that your surface is clean and as you pick it up that your hands are dry and clean of clay. Otherwise, you're going to mess up your texture. And then I'm just going to smush the two pieces together. Sorry about being out of frame there. My biggest video challenge. And then I'm just going to clip it with one of the binder clips just right at the end there. And it's going to create a slight divot, and that's nice because I have a flat surface to put those little um, circle embellishments on. So then I open it up, and then I'm taking a 10 millimeter tube, and I'm putting in between, and then I'm gently um, curling, um, working the pieces around it. I kind of want to um, put a little bit of pressure on there so, so it holds that curve, so it's going to um, be a little less stress on the joint at the top. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to wet the top. And I may have to re-drill the hole a little bit at the end, but at least I've got, a, got them in there in the right place. And then I'm adding a little, and this is, this is not thin slip. This is just slightly wet clay, a little wetter than you would normally have it to construct. And I want to add pressure to it and hold it for a minute. But the physics will pull those apart if you don't use a binder clip on them. So I'm going to add that little clip. Make sure they're even. Then I'm going to move this over to the drying surface. Okay, I've taken the piece off the drying surface. It was on there for about 15 minutes enough to dry and really secure that join. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the binder clips off. And I'm going to keep the tube in. Uh, it helps you to be able to hold on to the piece when you're doing your uh, refining and add, filling in any cracks and adding the balls. Um, I'm not going to show you all that. Those of you that do metal clay know how to refine. But um, I have given uh, the accredited teachers the full construction instructions. And um, if you're not familiar with metal clay, you certainly should consider taking a class with a teacher. Hadar has um, accredited teachers um, all over the country and out of the country, actually. And they're available in her um, Art and Silver website. So you can go ahead there and um, get a name of an accredited teacher. Or you could take one of my CraftCast classes, and I talk a lot about construction, um, all my tips and tricks in all those classes. Can't wait to see what you make.